Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and I'm here today to try and dispel a myth. And that myth is that chrome tapes are crap. So what we've got here is a pretty standard high quality cobalt dope ferric, which is the TDKSA. Now my deck has been calibrated to the 1988 Sony UX, but if you look there, the rec sensitivity and the bias is right in the middle. And if we look at the calibration VU for the SA, because it's also a cobalt dope ferric, like the UX's, you can see it's pretty spot on. There's no real need to do any bias adjustment or level adjustment. Yeah, the bias always flickers a little bit, but that's the way it is. So that's spot on. So if we take this out now and we put in a pure chrome, which in this case is going to be 1989 BASF Chrome Maxima, we put that in and we're going to have a look at how it seems with the same biasing characteristics and level characteristics of a cobalt dope ferric. And as you can see, it's down. It's down on bias. It's also down on level. So this is why if you put it in a deck which has been designed and calibrated for cobalt dope ferrics, you're going to find that a pure chrome is low on level and it's also low on bias when it's left at the same margins. So why is this? Well, the reason is that there are basically three types of type 2 tape formulations. All classed as type 2, all classed as high bias, but all distinctly different. The first that was ever developed by DuPont is Chrome. And so, as time's gone on, people have known Chrome to be type 2, high bias, a better tape. So the word chrome has been used, but that does not necessarily mean that chrome pigment is used on the tape. If we look at this chrome maxima from 89, you can see it's got the IEC2 standard. This is because when chrome first came out, it was the first type 2, and so the IEC2 standard sort of stuck to it. However, DuPont, who created the chrome pigment, and they created a lot of good polymers, they also created nylon and teflon, wanted to license this. It was expensive and hard to make. They wanted to make their investment out back, so uh, they licensed it. And a few manufacturers did in fact start making chrome tapes. BASF, one of the main proponents. But if we look here, I've got a very early TDK KR. And this is the first ever Type 2 cassette from TDK as far as I'm concerned. And it does say on it, chromium dioxide and chrome cassette. However, as time went on, the Japanese manufacturers didn't want to have to keep licensing the chrome pigment, so they came around to doping ferric tape and having that biased so that it would work with Type 2 specifications. So what this means is you see a lot of Japanese manufacturer cassettes like the Sony ES, and if you look, it says position chrome and it even says super chrome class but it doesn't say chrome dioxide it doesn't say CRO2 it just says it's chrome class and the position is chrome but this is not a chrome cassette this is a cobalt doped ferric cassette the third type of type 2 cassette out there is not very common but it's ones like this the that's EMX is also like the TDK HXS and there's also the that's ex as well which is a common one but basically if you look it says pure metal for high position what this means is that this tape in here is of a type 4 metal formulation however the biasing for it is for type 2 so we've got essentially three different types of type 2 tape three different formulations now it depends what your deck was biased to. For example, in Japan, where most of the decks came from, they're going to bias them to the tapes that they use. So, for example, the Sony decks, well, they're going to be biased to use Sony UX tapes mostly, and they're going to be biased for the Cobalt Dope Ferric. Therefore, when you use this in your deck, it sounds fantastic. However, because it's not biased for one of these, you put a pure chrome in the deck, it doesn't sound good as per the example. And that is the main reason that most people believe 
that chrome tapes are quite rubbish. It's simply because their decks are not calibrated to them. Their decks are calibrated mostly to cobalt dope ferrics. I mean, straight after the, the KR came out, TDK, what did they do next? They brought out this tape. And as you can see, this is a Super Avalin cassette. Maxell called it epitaxial, Sony called it uniaxial, but it's basically cobalt dope ferric. And now the biasing of the decks needs to be different to adapt for this type of tape. So let's go back now and look at a tape that is a cobalt dope ferric, how that reacts in a deck and what has to be done to get it to work nicely with a pure chrome. Okay, so we're using the 1990 SA again. Um, we'll just check the uh, calibration of it, but I haven't touched it. And as we can see, it's it's bob on again right there. So I've chosen a classical piece for this because you know classical music usually shows out the hiss of a tape and sounds beautiful. So let's just have a listen. I'm not pushing the tapes, I want to uh, I want them to record at around zero, so it's level playing field because to be fair you shouldn't be recording a chrome above zero anyway. Sounds good, doesn't it? Right, okay, let's stop this now and let's put in the BASF Chrome Maxima. And I'm not going to change the biasing levels to begin with. I'm just going to leave it at the same levels that the SA was at. Oh, calibration tone there. So as you can see now, this is peaking at minus four, where the SA was peaking at zero at around this time. It's going up to minus two, but it doesn't sound bad. But let's calibrate it up properly. Let's get the levels right. Let's get the bias right. In fact, the MOL on the uh, TDK Chrome Maxima, um, apparently the tape used was a Chrome Super, but the ones with the best MOL. And as you can see, the bias is actually a bit plus on that. The bias is very good on this tape. It's a bit bright, so it needs toning down a bit. As you can see from there, levels up and there's a bit of positive bias. But let's listen to it now when it's properly biased. <laughs> the model is showing it's a little bit hot. It needs to be turned down just a little bit. Beautiful full sound. I think pure chrome's rubbish. The deck just ain't up to it, I'm afraid. So what's the conclusion here? The conclusion has to be that if you want to get the best out of a chrome cassette, you need to have a deck that's calibrated for it. The best way is to get yourself a good deck with three heads preferably and manual calibration, or some decks, especially the later ones that have got uh, automatic calibration can usually make the best out of a chrome, but it's always best, I think, to do it manually Use meters, use your ear. 
but as you could probably hear in that last recording a pure chrome has a lower noise floor than a cobalt dope ferric so it doesn't need to be driven as hard the only thing i'm going to say though is if we look at these tapes that they're not all pure chrome now this one the basf chrome super 2 but this is the mid 90s one at this point there was cobalt doping to this cassette now it's hard to guess which manufacturers made all of these. BASF outsourced some stuff, bought some stuff in. There's a guy on tape head called Wilhelm who's very knowledgeable as he worked for BASF. But this is not a pure chrome. This performs like a cobalt dope ferric. I'm not saying it's not a good tape. It's a very good tape. But this isn't a pure chrome. Now, another myth I'll come to later on is uh, those about Memorex tapes. But this tape here... Memorex CRX, this is a 1987, it says Chrome by a Super, but here's the thing, the rule of thumb is how to check if a tape is a pure Chrome or not, is to simply have a smell of it. I know that sounds strange, but pure Chrome, something to do with the bonding and the polymers used, smell like wax crayons. If you get a whiff of wax crayons, you're dealing with something that at least has pure Chrome pigment in it. This Memorex, which was made by SKC, so a lot of people don't like Memorex because their early tapes, to be fair, weren't great quality. The pressure pads melted, the foam disappeared, they shed. But this tape here, a 1970, sorry, a 1987 SKC made tape, from what I can tell, is a pure chrome with some cobalt doping. It behaves very similar to an SA, but it is got that distinctive waxy smell and beautiful beautiful reproduction that one and this one which is an american only market one from what i can tell is also an skc and again this is another with pure chrome in it but cobalt doped and i've got to say that for my money these two cassettes are the most underrated cassettes out there they sound fantastic but you know what this has got CD written on it, which means automatically it's late junk, because it says ideal for CD recording, not vintage, not collectible. And this one, well, it's a Memorex. But if you are looking for some of the last bargains in the cassette world, these two are them. And if you're looking for any further bargains in the cassette world, don't forget to go to my website at cassettecomeback.com, where I've got all of these tapes for sale. And I've also got a lot of others that maybe you'd fancy too. So thanks for that. Like I say, don't be scared of BASF or Pure Chromes. Get them, and if your deck can calibrate to them, you're going to find they are some of the finest cassettes ever made. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.